Hey guys, Brian the Cell Phone Guy here again. Today we're going to take a look at the newest offering from Sonom, which is the XP8. Now we had many videos and a lot of response on the XP7, which was their uh, model from a couple years ago. And this one has everything that the XP7 had, but also makes uh, significant um, improvements and significant steps forward. So let's take a quick look at the XP8. So this is the XP8 on the right and last year's model, the XP7 on the left. Now they still have everything that we loved about the XP7 on the XP8. So you still get the three year warranty, you still get the incredible toughness, you still get the IP69 um, rating uh, for dirt and water, but you get a lot of improvements. So let's take a quick look at the XP8 and we'll go over the improvements. Now, the first thing on the back of the phone that you're gonna notice is that it has dual SIM card slots. So a SIM number one and SIM number two. But in North America, or at least in Canada, where I am, the none of the phone companies support dual SIM. So this dual SIM setup uh, looks like it's more for the overseas market. Now, the other thing that you'll see in the back here is a standard uh, micro SD memory card slot. And this phone will handle up to 128 uh, gigs of uh, expansion. The XP7, as you remember, had only 16 gigs of onboard storage, which just wasn't enough. This one has 64. So between the 64 and the 128 expansion, you've got all the memory that you could ever want. Now I wanna show you something a little bit different on the SIM card slot on these. This is a little bit of an older style of uh, SIM card uh, mounting. So give me a second while I open this thing up here. Okay, so on the SIM card, this is a standard nano SIM. So take this little door and you slide it backwards this way and then it hinges up. So what you wanna do is you wanna take the SIM with the uh, brass facing down, you slide it into the door like that and then you close the door but you have to be able to slide the silver part this way to lock the sim card in it's a little more difficult than the ones that we're used to where you just put it in the sim tray and slide the tray in but that's uh, what they've chosen to go with and then the battery goes on after that now this is a 4900 milliamp battery so it's amazing how long this thing will last and then just push the power button and it'll turn on. Now, this is a um, this model that I'm working with is a pre-production pre model, so you're not gonna see that first little warning on yours when it warms up, but everything else on this one is the same as what you're gonna get brand new out of the box. Now, this phone is running Android 7, so it's a big step up from the old ones, which came with Android 4.4. Uh, and of course, we've got the usual Sonom wake-up sound. Okay, so let's take a look at the basic features of the phone. So up in the top left-hand corner here, you have the power button. Next to that, you have the push to talk button. Now on TELUS, this is known as TELUS Link, and it's a two-way radio type of service. Uh, check with your carrier to see what they're calling it. Down here, we have the volume up and the volume down. On the bottom, if you remember on the XP7, we had a magnetic charger on the bottom. They've done away with that and behind this little rubber door here is a standard USB-C, but it still seals watertight because of the rubber door. On this side here, we have the emergency call button. Now this is something that some networks will um, subscribe to and some won't. So you again, check with your carrier. Uh, this is a soft touch button which controls a couple different functions on the phone and it's programmable. So you can make it do a several different things. Uh, this is the connection for the external speaker. So whether you're using a lapel mic or an earbud or anything like that, this is where it connects to. And up on the top of the phone, you have the connection for the expand battery. Now, on the face of the phone here, we have the same standard three buttons that you have on any Android phone. The only subtle difference is that these ones are actual buttons and not virtual buttons the way they are on, the, say, the Samsung or the LG. So the middle button not only lights up the screen and gets back to the home, but it also serves as the fingerprint sensor. Um, this is the backup button. And this button here will open all the recent apps that you've been in. 
and let you go back to them. So again, this is the this is the home button here. Now, what you're going to notice on this, because it's Android Nougat, it's the same as any other Android phone that you're used to. So there's very little getting used to that you have to do with this phone. Uh, just a few technical notes. It uh, it has an octa-core 2.2 gigahertz processor. It's got four gigs of internal RAM, which is a big improvement over the XP7. It's running a Snapdragon 630 processor. And the cameras are improved as well. We've got 12 megapixel on the front and we've got 8 megapixel on the back. And they are 1080p capable at 30 frames per second. Um, it's IP69 rated for a water and dust. And it's got a 5 point uh, LE LC, sorry, a 5.0 LCD display that measures 10 point, 1080 by 1920 pixels. Now this is just for comparison purposes. This is of course the XP7 on the left and the XP8 on the right. So as you can see, the screen size is a little bit bigger on the XP8, but not significant. And then what, the other thing that you'll notice if you put them like this is that the XP8 is quite a bit thinner than the XP7 was but they basically have the same layout uh, with regards to the buttons on the side and the buttons on the screen. So like I say, everything that we loved about the XP7 has been carried through onto the XP8. It's just, it's now a much more refined phone um, with the, uh, the better cameras, the expandable memory, four times the onboard memory, faster software, a faster processor, uh, but the same things that we've always loved with the, uh, the warranty and the durability and the extremely loud ringer and uh, the, clear, the clearness of the uh, phone calls. So I'm gonna use this thing as my primary phone for the next couple of weeks and then I'll be back with a little bit more in-depth uh, report as to how it holds up. Uh, I, have good, um, I have good hopes for this device. I think it's gonna be a great device for anybody who's in the uh, first responder or the construction industries. It's not the kind of phone that's going to appeal to the average consumer because it's just, quite frankly, too big and bulky and it's not what they're used to. But if you are in a, an occupation that uh, is um, in a rugged environment, this is definitely the phone for you. So stay tuned for more reports in the future. Um, if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button and the like button. If you'd like a copy of the owner's manual, uh, which doesn't come with the phone, it's a download, uh, just email me and I will uh, send you the link. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching.